Today's topic is grow to your full stature. Grow to your full stature. It's easy if you're in a small town to have small town expectations for your life because there are, uh, aren't models around except of what is passable in a small town. So uh, depending on where your town is, you may not have anybody who's really excelling at the things that you're interested in. So you may think that you're doing quite well in compared with a pool of people who don't have that skill or ability or interest. Until you get to a convention of your peers and find out, oh, oh the standard that I've been operating with is nowhere near what's possible. So today we're gonna to look at that, uh, grow to your full stature, and, and I'll just start with the spoiler right from the beginning. Jesus expects you to grow to his height. And uh, it's not just Jesus, Paul expects all of us to grow to Jesus' height. So we'll be looking at that today. Um, many of you know, because I've mentioned it a couple times, they, my, my mom's parents uh, had a home in Spokane, and on the door frame of uh, one of the doors, they uh, got out a pencil every time, every year when we came, and marked our height. So we stood against the wall as straight as we possibly could. They put a book on the top of our head and marked that spot with a pencil. And then you could see where you were compared with cousins, brothers and sisters. I don't rem know if our um, uncles and aunts, if our parents were on that or not, but I do know there were a lot of names and marks on that so you could see how you were doing compared with everyone else. So that was an annual uh, event, annual measurements. And you could see every year that we'd grown. What would have happened if we'd have done that every day? Be kind of discouraging, right? Because it's exciting to see what happens once a year because you've grown a lot. But if you're doing those daily measurements, you're just going to have a really fat line uh, because you don't grow hardly at all day after day after day after day. It's only in the course of a year that you're able to see, oh, there's been significant growth. There's been significant change. But day by day, it just seems like nothing's happening. So the things that you measure day to day need to be different from what you measure year to year. Because uh, there are things that, that happen at a slower pace. And measuring them daily is not very helpful. You need to have yearly measurements for some things. But daily measurements, you can, uh, you can ask yourself in terms of growing on my grandparents' door frame, uh, are you eating right? Are you exercising? Are you doing the things that will cause you to be healthy? And in, a, in your relationship with God, things that will help you along the way is, uh, one of them would be, are you reading the Bible every day? If you're reading the Bible every day, it will plant seeds that will be very, very helpful as you hit crisis times, as you hit times where you're not sure, times when you're confused, all the many times in your life that need God's word are unknown to you. So in advance, it's helpful if you're just once a day reading some portion of God's word and getting it into your routine so that you, when you need it, it will be there. Uh, so that's one thing you could measure on a daily basis. Have I read God's word today? Uh, you can do a lot of measurements in a day that will keep you on track so that you will likely grow over the course of a year. Uh, this month we've been looking at two things and emphasizing them. One is to do what Jesus tells you to do. And 
we find that Jesus had not exactly small ambitions for us. Jesus expects us to do things greater than what he did. So Jesus raised three people from the dead, better than that. Jesus caused blind people to see, deaf to hear, lame to walk, people who had demons to be freed, uh, better than that. So at this point, I am guessing you have either checked out in disbelief or you've looked at the standards, you've looked at that wall and said, I'm never going to get that high. Um, at which case, in which case, you are trusting yourself and the past instead of Jesus. Because Jesus believes that you actually can do greater things than Jesus did. And that his death on the cross is part of the reason that you can. And the gift of the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks is part of the reason that you are able to do greater things than Jesus did. So uh, this month we've been looking at this topic that we need to do what Jesus tells us to do. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, announce the good news that the kingdom of God is near, cleanse lepers. And that that's, it, it's easy to see the need, to see people who are hurting, but it's hard to know how to do it. So the main thing that is helpful is just for us to try. If we don't try, we won't do any of that stuff ever because we're not trying. So uh, when you see someone who's blind, somehow try. Maybe that actually means engaging with them, maybe it doesn't. But it definitely means you engaging with God who loves that person who can't see and said you'll be able to do greater things than Jesus. And it doesn't help if you just decide, well, in the past I've never seen anything, so in the future I don't expect to see anything either. Um, again, that's putting your faith in the past instead of in Jesus. So do what Jesus tells you to do, that is try, get some practice. Uh, so last week I mentioned to heal the sick you have to try, you don't have to be confident. For most of us we will not be confident. You will all, always or often come with the expectation that I don't know that anything can happen here, but Jesus has compassion for this person and told me to help. So I'm going to do what I can and I'm going to see what God does. You don't have to be confident. Uh, I'm going to jump. We've got a slide coming up. I don't know where it is, but uh, I'm going to jump to it right now. Some of you have these in your wallet from 15 years ago or so. So it may be frayed and you may need an upgrade, a laminated version. I did not print these up today, but I, out today, but I do have you know, five or six for those of you who are new and would like one or anybody who wants to get theirs renewed. This is a Kingdom of God student ID. Uh, that all of us are students and learners. This is a learner's permit. It says the bearer of this card is entitled to unlimited hours to practice being a follower of Jesus without worrying about outcome. All you have to do is practice. Doesn't matter if it works or not. Just get some practice. Uh, the bearer of this card is under the supervision of the Holy Spirit who will guide and direct the learner and comfort and console when things don't work out as hoped. During this phase, expected to last up to 100 years, getting practice is much more important than getting things right. So if you will approach it, I think, with this attitude, I'm not the expert, I'm just a disciple of Jesus, and I'm just learning along the way. I don't know how to do this exactly, but Jesus says it's possible, so I'm going to take Jesus as his word. And I'm going to reach out and do what I can 
and let God fill in the gaps and let God uh, do what God wants to do. A slight change of topic perhaps for some people. When you are using your resources out of great love for God, you will find that there are people who can't stand it. Even though you might think, I don't know why they're so upset. It's none of their business. Uh, but you may have already discovered that people get upset about lots of things that aren't any of their business. And they're happy to tell people things that um, it's none of their business. Uh, so if you want to follow along with this story, uh, John is uh, quite a ways towards the back of the book. Uh, and we're going to start in John 12. When we start in John 12, we're starting uh, with a story that's in progress, like, like your lives today. And Mary and Martha were beloved by Jesus and also uh, their brother Lazarus. And they have a history with Jesus. He was great friends with them. Uh, and uh, in John 11, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead when he had died. And so now uh, the, Jesus is causing a commotion because so many people are coming to him for healing. But Lazarus is now walking around testifying, yeah, I was dead, but I'm alive. And Lazarus was uh, causing so many people to look at Jesus and listen to Jesus that people who didn't like Jesus decided, we have got to kill them both. We've got to kill Jesus because he's misleading the people, they thought. But Lazarus is such an amazing example of what Jesus can do. We've got to take out Lazarus too. So now Jesus is at their home, home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And there they gave a dinner for him. And these were people with a gift of hospitality, Martha in particular. So when it says Martha served, this is someone that if you ever got an invitation from Martha, you wanted to say yes, because she was so good at throwing a party. There, uh, Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took out a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet. There is no way we can imagine what this was like. Um, if you hate perfume, you might think it's like going into Macy's, where there are several acres of people spraying perfume into the air any day that you go in there. And it's hard to tell what the scents are because there's dozens of vendors uh, trying to get you to buy their particular perfume. But that's not what it was like. Uh, just as an aside, I bought uh, article of clothes from Macy's this Christmas season and washed it twice and I still couldn't get the perfume out. Uh, but that's still not what this was like. Ma um, Mary took a pound of costly perfume of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, wiped them with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. It was overwhelming. Over the top, too much. And what's going to happen when someone is so thankful to Jesus that they give everything they've got or just an extravagant gift is that there's going to be people who dislike it. It threatens their stinginess by showing someone a different standard. And so any time you do something significant, there will be someone else who should know better who complains. We need to just expect it. And in fact, if you think you're doing something that's really helpful and nobody's complaining, it might not be as great as you think it is yet. 
uh, because when you hit that where you're actually doing something that's really significantly helpful, you are going to hear complaints and opposition. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, verse 4, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray Jesus, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? That's 300 days wages. So a year's salary. This perfume was worth a year's salary. So when I said earlier, it's not like going into Macy's, even though Macy's might seem like a cloud of perfume to you. This is a year's worth of income spilt in a mint. So if you think about the amount of perfume you could buy in a year's salary and just pouring it all out at once because you were so thankful to Jesus. Mary liked Jesus. She was a good friend of Jesus before her brother was raised. And when her brother died, Mary had kind of a crisis of, I don't know if it's fair to say a crisis of faith, but it, it definitely was, Mary was the one who should have been closest to Jesus in John 11, but she was hiding not willing to go see him, and Martha was the one who stepped out to see him. But now that Mary has seen all that Jesus can do and, and how much he's restored her family, her brother that she loves, a year's wages is nothing to honor Jesus. It's just something she does out of love. Judas says, why was this done? Uh, verse 6, he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Uh, but people won't, they'll be offended just by the generosity when you fall in love with Jesus and see all that he's done for you and your family. When you get to the spot of transformative thanksgiving, People around you who have hearts that are too small will be offended. There's a really wonderful hymn uh, that 